Hi, I'm Peter Matthews, and I'm uh, excited to have uh, Don Griffiths on today from L3 Harris. Uh, Don joined us just a couple of months ago to look at the new NFPA 1802 standards for firefighter radios. And we're back to look at uh, some updates on the standards, but also look at the uh, new unveiling of the uh, XL Extreme Radio from L3 Harris. So, Don, thanks for joining us. Uh, and before we begin, can you just share a little bit about your background uh, with, with L3 Harris and public safety communications? Sure, and, and thank you, Peter, for having me back again. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you, and I, I know we always talk offline a little bit, so it's, a, it's exciting for me. Um, my name is Don Griffiths. I'm a uh, principal uh, product manager here at L3 Harris. I'm based out of Lynchburg, Virginia. And I've been working here at L3 for the past 16 years. Uh, I, I came from um, Motorola. I worked there for about 11 years prior to that, and I've been a, an amateur radio operator since I was 10 years old. So. I don't like my boss to hear it, but I don't really ever work a day in my life because I do what I love doing. And, and, and that is uh, working with, with radios and with communication systems and, and helping our first responders. Uh, when, I, when I was a teenager, I was working traffic for hurricanes down in South Florida where I was raised. So uh, this wow. is a, a, it's an exciting time. I love it. And, and I'm really excited. I, I tell everyone, Peter, that this last several years working on the extreme product and going out and meeting with the different fire agencies across the country have actually, uh, I say, opened my eyes maybe uh, to a, a whole part of the public safety industry that I had really not gotten into. Well, Don, thanks for joining us. And, and for somebody who doesn't work that much uh, or, or says they don't work that much, uh, you, you've been through uh, a, a ton of different projects between the, the new radio system that's coming out as well as NFPA 1802. So, can you just give us a brief update on 1802 and what that means to the firefighters, uh, you know, uh, moving forward? Absolutely. I think so. January of this year, 2021, right? We, we, the 1802 was released. It's this document, right? When you think about firefighters in the field, right? It, it, it was born out of a tragedy back in 2011, but you know, the, the SCBA masks that firefighters wear, I always talk about this, the gloves, their turnout coat, everything had an NFPA rating with the exception of their communication gear. And that's it, literally, it's one of their life-saving devices, right? I've talked to firefighters, they say my turnout coat, my SCBA mask and my comms device are the three pieces of life-saving gear. So the 1802 coming out uh, in, in January of this year, now it, it has set a standard for basically what a radio and a speaker microphone should look, feel, and, and operate like at what temperatures, everything from extremes of 1,700 degrees of a, a flame to a, a baking, repeated baking at 350 degrees, and then a, an immersion after that to some uh, salt water to see how they are in different conditions. And, and of course, the, the drop testing. And I, I think it's, a, it's important to understand that there's a, a three meter drop test that's added to the radio and the speaker mic. So the NFPA standard, it, it, it's to set a certain level of, we'll say durability, uh, heat resistance and immersibility on a, a communication device for the hazard mode. And in addition to that, there's a, there's a bunch of new software features uh, that are added such as uh, the voice announce annunciations, uh, the data logging, think about that as the black box. So uh, mm -hmm. quite a bit of new safety features added into the design and development for this standard as well. So it's, it's robust durability that, that's been asked for as along with a lot of sophistication as far as what software features, because really today's modern communication devices are truly software defined devices. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and with that, let's let's transition. So you're with L3 Harris and you rolled out the Excel Extreme. Um, it's the new P25 radio. So it's being touted as firefighter friendly, right? For the firefighting environment, as well as firefighters operating with gloved hands. That's a huge challenge. The buttons, the knobs, uh, the push to talk buttons. Uh, those have been challenging for firefighters for years. So can you show us some of the new features regarding, or I'm sorry, with the Excel Extreme? Sure. So when when with the XL Extreme, and thank you very much for, for allowing us even to, to discuss that, we, we launched it last month in, in June of 2021. And the, the XL Extreme is unprecedented 
uh, for durability, it's uh, sophistication, safety, and the, the things we've added to that, and I, I've got one here with me right now, uh, you know, the, the big thing, and we got it from not just the NFPA guidance that's out there, but also through our own voice of the customer, where we went out and met with different agencies across the country. I, I don't want to, you know, okay. not be remiss in not mentioning that, that we at L3 Harris went out and did a voice of the customer. And the, the, the big three things that our customers told us are make it durable. Well, that sounds familiar, right? <laughs> that's where the NFPA was going. Uh, make it easy to use, make it easy to operate. And uh, that's things like we wear gloves, right? They, a firefighter or a utility worker traditionally put on a, a big glove and, and they've got to be able to rotate the knobs to interact with the, the push to talk to any of the keypad on it. If you notice the keypad is very large on this device mm -hmm. and there's a lot of action because we understand, and, and, and of course the most, you know, the most important button, which is this red one here, that's your emergency button, and uh, any of the other options on it, big, large uh, buttons so that with a glove on a firefighter or in, in, with the extreme, you know, it's, it's designed, it has that, that, we'll say it's born a fire, but we also have targeted to markets like the utilities as well as our military that work with interop, uh, having a, a tough device. So, and then universal wear. So, you know, we went to different agencies and some may wear their, their microphone around their turnout code on, uh, you know, upside down. Some might have it on the front. Uh, the radio may be in a, a, the comm pocket or it could be down in their sling. And with any way, shape or form of having the device mounted on the user, make sure that the communications are clear, crisp audio. So we've, we've put a lot of effort into our uh, noise cancellation and of course into the, the audio power levels. We went back uh, to our, uh, you know, the, the vendor we used before to develop our sound system. We've got a that okay. woofer and tweeter and, and woofer in the, the microphone and the radios to allow that industry leading loud audio and noise cancellation at the same time too. Because that's, when it comes down to it, these are primary communication devices. And again, meeting all of those rigid heat recommendations of 1700 degrees flame or 500 degrees for five minutes, uh, 350 degrees for, and then adding on top of that. So there, there's quite a bit that we've put into the, and of course the drop rating, right? That three meter onto solid concrete. A, we, we think about it, the traditional mill 810G spec is one meter onto plywood. Now at L3 Harris, we've always done a 1.5 meters onto concrete. And we just doubled that for this device, right? We went up to the, the three meters onto concrete, which is, uh, it, you had a fire firefighter. I said, what do you think about that? And they were like, well, you know, Don, when we drive up on scene, someone hasn't conveniently placed plywood around on the ground for us. So it's usually if our radios fall off of us or off of our trucks, the they're falling onto asphalt or concrete. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, and that's unfortunately that's true and that's just the, the, the way the fire service environment is that there's, sure. there's nothing that's going to be exactly from that testing environment it, exactly it is tough it's rugged so and, and the durability so you mentioned that earlier uh so you talked about some of the the, the tests the extreme heat uh the drop test um so how important is durability when it comes to the radio design and to keep it functioning for firefighters as their critical lifeline well it's extremely important so that's you know you think about it in in the in the NFPA, the one the one big test is that flame. There's a there's a a 10 second 1700 degree flame, and that was tragically born out of the the incident that we're you know back in San Francisco where the two firefighters had, had you know gave their all to to save a family and a, and a single family residence. That the the estimation was that the speaker microphone cable and the radio were exposed to about 1300 degrees at 20 miles an hour. That's the, that, that flashover event that had happened. So that specification in the NFPA handles that. So to make sure that in the future, this cable uh, or this microphone or the radio, uh, that they're gonna handle all of those extreme temperatures. So it's, it's, that, that's the biggest thing. I mean, out of, out of all the other parts, to, in, in my opinion, the, the having that heat durability and that rating of being able to take the extreme heat and then again, having that heat and maybe a fire hose coming across and getting it wet, making sure that it still operates after that uh, subjection to water or dropping. Uh, normally, when a firefighter's in the in a house or in a building or walking around, and you know we think about this, 
a day in the life is uh, of a firefighter is, yeah, they may have this in their turnout coat, but they're not fighting fires every day, hopefully. I mean, that's, that's not their, but, you know, they, they'll use their radio every day. They could be doing EMS work, helping EMS or doing lifts or, or community work. And that's still a, a, a primary comm device that they'll have on them all the time. So that, that durability, and if they put it on their, their seat of their cab, which is maybe six feet off the ground, it gets knocked off on the ground. It's just got to work. You know, you don't have to replace the device just because it fell off the, the a pumper panel or off of a, a seat of a cab. And uh, things like that, it, it, you know, you'll see that sometimes the cable might get stretched and get exposed to heat. We have also developed things like a quick disconnect on the microphone so that if, oh, wow. in the future, if the cabling happens to get just worn out or maybe gets crimped inside of a, a door or gets damaged in some way, that you, you don't have to replace the entire mic and, and, and cable because let's face it, the, this is the expensive part of, of the device. So if we can just yeah. have a quick disconnect, quarter turn, allow field upgrade of the cable and field replacement of the cable and keep the, uh, the other part, uh, it, it saves a lot of money for the end user. So we, those are other little things outside of the standard that we put into, uh, into mind when we were developing the, the, the extreme radio and extreme speaker mic. Well, that's great. And, and to be able to replace that mic cord is, is phenomenal, just uh, based on, you know, the wear and tear I've seen at fire scenes over the years. And, you know, taking photos, you've seen some some really uh, beaten up uh, cords. So to be able to have that and not have to worry about uh, just taping it off for the sake of waiting for a new mic to get ordered, uh, it's, it, that, that's great and inexpensive to have on hand. So thanks. Thanks, Don. So let's talk about uh, sophistication, right? Uh, this is being touted as a sophisticated radio. Something you probably don't think about when you think about firefighter radios and communications, but as technology is evolving, um, it's, it's becoming not just a radio, but truly a connected and commu uh, communication device. So can you give us some insight into the Excel Extreme and what they provide as far as uh, sophistication? I would love to, Peter. So yeah, so when you come down to it, and I'll say it every time, these are primary communication devices, but with FirstNet, with the advent of FirstNet, who's one of our mission critical partners, and, and Verizon, and now T-Mobile, right, in, in, the, in the fray, right, having uh, not only a multiband radio for the LMR, because we think mm -hmm. multiband, everyone thinks multiband, oh, that must be VHF, UHF, 7A, yes, but there's more bands, right, that are in the radio, Wi-Fi is a band, LTE has actually about, uh, about 24 bands that we packed wow. inside of here, and, and then Bluetooth on top of it, so these are all, in, in the amazing thing is to be able to have all those bands inside of this compact device and not interfere with each other. But having that LTE and the Wi-Fi capability now allows that end user to have that intelligent roaming where they can, at some point, let the radio, since it is basically a little sophisticated computer, pick that, you know, I'll talk on LMR or uh, maybe if I'm out of range of my LMR system, but I've got great FirstNet or Verizon or T-Mobile coverage, I can key up and talk over the LTE network with either the, the Beyond or the Mission Critical Push to Talk applications in the device. So that's that's one thing. And then having that LTE capability, there, there's a big data pipe. So now you have yeah. the ability to set this device up as a Wi-Fi hotspot, just like you have at your house. Where do we all have it? have this device up. And now you can tether things to it with our mission critical alliance partners. We've, we've partnered with Adashi and, and TRX for things like uh, incident command and in-building location and uh, microphone vendors that can take streaming video. Uh, so with thermal imaging wow. cameras, now you'll start to see with why they'll have a Wi-Fi connectivity. The whole idea of that is firefighter can now take their tick out when they're doing their six seconds on each side, stream that Wi-Fi data through their XL Extreme out to, it can be incident command, it doesn't have to be, you know, don't, they've already got a lot on their plate, but someone can see that information real time along with the, the verbal responses from the firefighter giving that, that data. Okay. So those are, those are really big things. And then, you know, of course, that sophistication, since you've got that, we can tether other devices and make the, that end user truly a connected firefighter, connected user, connected first responder. Right. And that'll, I think that will add some enhancement too. And again, that's something that's going to grow, you know, between the time this video is produced and, 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 you know, hits the streets, you know, within a couple of months, there's going to be something else that comes out that, that sounds like it could be tethered to the radio, uh, which is great. 
I mean, it's just, it's great to have that ability to, to be able to connect everything to one spot and, and give the firefighters and the incident commanders access to that type of, uh, type of data. Um, great. Well, Don, as we wrap up today, is there anything else um, that, that, you know, you want to touch on before we, before we close out? So again, we're talking about the uh, XL Extreme Radio from uh, L3 Harris and, and um, it's, it's just out. I mean, it's just out on the streets right now. So uh, anything else before we wrap up today, Don? Yeah, I think that the last thing, Peter, I'd like to talk about is, that, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, what, why do we have these devices? And it's, it's really for safety, right? And so let's, let's focus on some of the safety. And one of the, the little silly things that I'll call it silly because it's it just something we've had in the, the radios before was fire one the ability to color code, color tag the, the top display. Okay. Well, we've also matched that color tagging now with the top of the police one, the extreme speaker mic. SWAT 2. So as you're rotating through, because the radio, right, might traditionally be in your comm pocket or yeah. under your turnout yeah. coat, you might not see that. Firefighters love this because they can tell everyone, go to the green channel, and then IC can look at the team before they deploy and see that everyone's on the green channel. Well, now having that green or red LED Fire one. on their turnout coat, because this is visible all the time, IC can have that. So it's, it's, it's a safety feature. When you're getting ready to deploy, IC can look at the team, make sure everyone's on the same comm channel. But outside of that, having that embedded LTE allows us now to uh, take that PAR information and be more sophisticated with our Adashi at Mission Critical Alliance partner uh, to measure things as tank pressure or the temperature. Uh, we've built in temperature sensors into the microphone, the radio, so we wow. can actually read the, the ambient temperature around the firefighter. Uh, with TRX, we've got in-building location, and we'll talk more about that in the future. And, and just knowing that the, the gear is not going to melt, that, that durability is built in, thanks to the, the standards out there. And, uh, you know, the, one of the biggest things I think that touched me throughout this last few years of, of doing this is biometric data. The, the leading cause of line of duty death uh, for firefighters is actually cardiac arrest. And, you know, I had a, I had a chief tell me at one point, you know, the... Uh, this profession, firefighting and, and, and police for that matter, are the one, one of the few professions that you can do everything right and still not go home. And it said you could do everything right and go home, have dinner and go to bed and have that cardiac arrest. So putting the ability to send biometric data real time when you're mm -hmm. in the incident or after when you're in your, you know, when you're doing your recess, having that data. So now you can see that your firefighters are getting down back to their resting rate of heart rate. Uh, and, and if they're not, you know, it, rather than manually having everyone check their pulse at a certain period of time, you can say, hey, you know, we've noticed an anomaly. You might, you might want to go check yourself in and get a, you know, get a quick diagnostic over at the, uh, the emergency room or something. Those types of things to, to save users and to make the, the device safer, I think is, the, is paramount. And that's really what we're striving for here is not only make it durable, make it sophisticated, and then allowing that sophistication to you know, help save and, and protect our first responders in the field. That's really what, what it's all about. Don, great. I, I appreciate you taking the time with us today. I mean, this, this has been a great uh, quick overview of really all the technology that's built into uh, really? it built into the uh, Excel Extreme. So thank you. And we'll put up a link here. Uh, you can take a look, click on this link right here, and you'll be able to get right through to their website to see more information. And I also encourage you to go back and, and watch the previous quick chat video uh, that was with um, with Don as well on NFPA 1802 and their standard for uh, the new radio standards. So, Don, thanks so much for joining us, uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, at some events this year and, and have the opportunity to learn more uh, about the radio in person. So thank you. Hey, Peter, thank you very much, and thanks everyone out there for what you do every day. So thank you very much, and, and have a great day. Have a great time.